Right, oh, this is uh, about forming and solving, well, quadratics. Um, we apply the same principles, really, to forming and solving all sorts of equations, whether they're linear or exponential or, or, or all sorts of things you may not have heard of. Um, but uh, here, this is principally about quadratics because this is a particular kind of uh, problem that does crop up quite a bit uh, in GCSE examination, certainly at uh, in higher uh, level uh, GCSE. So, um, so the thing I'm going to do is just run through a few examples, really, and kind of to illustrate the point. Generally speaking, what we're doing is we are forming equations using algebraic quantities um, and then probably a bit of rearrangement and then we're in a position to solve the equation. Now this first one isn't actually a quadratic um, so uh, let me just uh, uh, go through this because just to sort of explain the, the, the idea if you're not uh, actually familiar. So um, okay Let's have a look. The lengths in centimetres of the sides of the triangle are 3x minus 5, 2x minus 1, and x plus 1. Here we go. We've got the triangle. Write down an expression in terms of x for the perimeter of the triangle. OK, so what would we do if, if they were numbers? We would just add them up. That's all we're doing with these. But, um, so this is a number. We just don't know what. We don't know what x is. Um, then, then uh, you know, we, we'd act, actually know what the value of 3x minus 5 is but ultimately um you know it, it will it, it is a value it's an algebraic expression um uh, so uh, so if we add those up 3x minus 5 2x minus, uh, minus 1 and x plus 1 so that the perimeter is some of those and if we just rearrange that we get 6x minus 5 so this is your algebraic expression um for the perimeter so when it says expression that's what it that's what it means um right so part b goes on to say the perimeter of the triangle is 31 centimeters work out the value of x right now this is um where we need to apply our um, um what i call it it's a narrative equation it's not an equation written in maths terms but this statement here is an equation. So I'm just re, re, re uh, copied it up here. The perimeter of the triangle is 31 centimeters. Now, if we're going to translate this into into sort of mathematical terms, uh, then what have we got? Perimeter of the triangle, right? Okay. Well, we already know that six x minus five because we've just worked that out. Is means equals. <clears throat> okay, so that is the sort of narrative code, if you like, for an equal sign. Sometimes we get, um, uh, you know, things like a third of, of, of will mean um, multiply. Um, we haven't got that here. We've just got is, that's equal, and then 31. So 6x minus 5 equals 31. That is um, that is our equation. Sort of. So we've done the first bit, the forming of, uh, of the equation. OK, uh, well, we can solve it now. This is uh, uh, relatively straightforward. It'll add 5 to both sides. 6x equals 36, and therefore x equals 6. Find the value of, of x. So um, that is that one. That's a linear uh, a linear problem. Um, let's go on and have a look at some uh, quadratics. Um, a lot of these problems tend to be to do with geometrical shapes, um, and this is one such problem. Right angle triangle, um, and its area is 2.5 square centimeters so we've got a base of x and a height of x minus two it says find the perimeter of the triangle okay well that's that's the actual the, the the question um i've 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 not actually completed it here because it's that, that um, uh, i'm just done enough to illustrate the the point about forming and solving equations really um but again um the area of the triangle is 2.5 square centimeters so this is our narrative equation here um now you know there's a little bit of experience involved in actually spotting these things and not all questions will have them um 
in some in some situations then it's sort of implicit from 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 what you're doing so you have to kind of construct the narrative equation yourself um other equations there may be more than one but typically um you know we've got this situation here the area of the triangle is 2.5 square centimeters brought up here right okay the area of a triangle or the area of a triangle is half base times height and that's the is is the equals and the 2.5 right so well we know the base so we know the height in algebraic terms we don't know we don't know the actual value at this point but we know the uh, um the 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 actual uh, the the algebraic values for those so we can substitute those into this formula um so we've got half times x times x minus 2 equals 2.5 if we multiply that through we're going to multiply by 2 um and then uh, and then expand it we're going to get this equation so here is your equation that is the equation formed and interestingly, oh, this one is a quadratic, of course. Um, now, um, we can solve this in a number of different ways uh, for x. Um, and we have to find x before we can proceed. Um, basically, I'll just put these numbers into the calculator and come up with this solution. There is also a negative solution. Um, but clearly, x uh, can't be negative. So we um so for our problem we need the positive solution and that's three point four four nine five to four decimal places, right? The problem actually goes on to say find the perimeter. So we have to do a bit more work really before we can actually answer this because we have to to apply um, uh, Pythagoras theorem in order to work out this hypotenuse. Um, so we can do that because we know x, uh, we know this, and therefore we know the length of this. Um, uh, height here because it's going to be two less in other words 1.4495 so uh, we have to plug those into um, into our Pythagoras theorem calculation to get the long side uh, the the hypotenuse uh, length and then we can uh, we can work out the perimeter and I've not done that because uh, uh, it doesn't sort of illustrate the point really um, another geometric one here um I'm going to fly through these. Um, you know, you can pause the video and um, and, and come back and and, and check or, or work things through for yourself if you like. Here we've got a trapezium in the, uh, measurements in centimeters. The area of the trapezium is three hundred and fifty-one square centimeters. Show this. Show show that this. So, in other words, it's asking us to actually create that uh, equ equation. We've got to form the equation. So here we go. The area of the trapezium is 351 square centimetres. There is our narrative equation. Um, <clears throat> and what is the area? Well, um, for a trapezium, um, it's the mean width times the height. Um, and the width in this case is going to be the horizontal here times the height so the mean width is if we add these, these two widths and divide by two that is the mean width x minus four plus x minus x, x minus four plus x plus five all divided by two <clears throat> that is the mean width um if you're not convinced that that is the formula for the area of a trapezium then you probably need to go away and check that but uh but that's what we're doing it's almost like we've got a rectangle which kind of comes up to here and down there, and then so these two, there's a trade off here between these two bits, anyway. Um, equals that. Whoa, though, that, that's two cancels with that, and we've got this. Rearrange that, and lo and behold, we've got our equation. So that really is uh, that, that's that's the kind of uh. The, the question sort of completed and um, I've gone on and actually found the actual solutions again this calculator uh, <coughs> brought into into use here and um, um, again as we suppose if there is a negative in the in the quadratic then then um, you're going to find one of the solutions is, is negative or at least maybe two and um, and therefore we've got uh, We've got that solution there, but x equals thirteen is the uh, is the actual solution. So that's what x would be, <coughs> right? 
uh, we could go back and actually you know uh, uh, apply that to 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 any of these quantities <clears throat> further down let's have a look at this one uh claire buy some shares for 50 50 x dollars x we know x is a number we don't know what it is later she sells the shares for 600 plus 5x and she makes a profit of x percent show this uh, quadratic equation right now in this one it doesn't really actually give you the narrative e equation does it um so we've got to we've got this kind of spot which one we need now in this case what we're talking about is the profit percentage equation um um and we just know that to be it's the sale minus the cost so that is the actual profit yeah what we, what we sell the shares for and what we bought them for that is the actual profit but the profit percentage uh, we basically have to we have to divide by the cost and then to make a percentage we, we have to to uh, to multiply by 100 so that is the that is the the narrative equation which we in this case we have to kind of construct now we can um, we can basically um kind of work it from there because we we know what this is the profit percentage we know it's in algebraic terms yeah okay we don't know the number yet but we know it in algebraic terms because it says x percent so profit percentage is x and then we've got the sale value we've got the cost value in twice in our in, in this uh, uh, formula times 100 right okay we've done the hard work now um that we multiply both sides by 50x squared um and basically do a bit of rearrangement we're going to divide by 50 here um and then rearrange all that we're going to end up with this x squared plus 90x minus 1200 <sighs> and of course it says uh, solve it and find the value of x correct to three significant figures so uh again with um we've taken the positive solution for the for for, for this equation 11.8 uh, x equals 11.8 um and uh, i haven't worked it through but it may be that actually there is a a, a a negative solution it is possible that we could end up making a loss i'm not worked that through anyway i think uh, it's clear in this question they're actually looking for the positive solution so um so that is that one again no narrative equation given here's another one where there's no narrative equation given either so we have to kind of create or kind of a spot what we need to use consider the square below calculate the length of the side so um right well um we've got two different algebraic expressions for the same thing here really the same quantity um so i suppose what we're saying is the height equals the width um when we take um say the, the the you know it's a square right implicitly we're saying well the height equals the width that that could be your narrative equation <laughs> all right so we've taken height equals width and therefore blah four y squared minus four equals 15 y bah. okay you know and then that, that gives us our equation uh now on this one i've just uh i i've just uh exploded the middle um well uh, broken x in this case it's y in order to factorize this now if you uh, if you're not familiar with that then you you, you might uh, want to check out the video on this under solving quadratics um but it basically gives us this factorization two solutions to that quadratic um but only one of those is a solution to this problem and that is y equals four um because the negative one isn't going to work on negative lengths um so uh yeah so it's four so we can substitute four into into 15y and it will give us 60. um equally we could substitute it into 4y squared minus four of course and it will also give us 60. 
Right, okay, so that is uh, another one. This one has a little bit uh, more to it. Diagram shows a circular pond of radius r meters surrounded by a circular path, and the circular path has a constant width of 1.5 meters. So there we go. So this is the pond in the middle of the white bit, and then this gray bit around the outside is the path. So uh, the area of the path is one tenth the area of the pond. Now, it didn't actually use the word of here, um, but you kind of have to imagine that there is an of there, one tenth of the area of the pond, and therefore of is going to mean multiply, isn't it? And uh, we've got our is there. So it says show that two r squared minus 60 r minus 45 equals zero. So this being our narrative equation, I brought this up here. Um, the area of the path is equals one tenth of one tenth times the area of the pond. Okay, so we're starting to turn it into a, uh, a mathematical equation. Now, the area of the path basically it's the area of the sort of the big circle minus the area of the small circle, isn't it? So that's what that is pi times. The area of the big circle, well, the big circle's got a radius of r plus this extra bit of 1.5 here. So that's that. Minus pi r squared, uh, which is the, so that's the area of the, the actual pond, is equal to one tenth times the area of the pond. Well, we've got pi r squared coming in again here. Okay, so, uh, well, the pi's cancel out, which is nice. Um, so uh, that's leaving us with r plus 1.5 squared. If we take this over onto the other side um, and add it into this one tenth, we're going to get 11 tenths r squared. Multiply out the left hand side. Equals 11 tenths times r squared. Um, yeah, a bit of um, uh, kind of uh, manipulation with this is going to give us get us to this point and therefore to that point without actually um, going into the gory details. Um, okay, so that has shown um, A. So uh, if you're not convinced by this, just pause the video and just, just kind of work this through for yourself. Um, but uh, that works. OK, and then if we uh, want to solve for this again, uh, Use the calculator, and it's given us a, a radius of 30.732 to three decimal places. Should actually write meters in there. Um, and um, okay, um, so that so we've shown the equation, we've worked out R, it says calculate the area of the pond, and so now we know R, the area of the pond, pi R squared, and by calculator that comes to this number here which to three significant figures as requested is 208 square meters okay so um again you know it's about spotting this narrative equation here and then applying the algebraic values that are relevant to those uh, particular um values in the narrative equation all right so i think we just got one more to do here um uh, <clears throat> so i think this is this is this is a kind of nicest problem really and this is very much like the sort of thing that you might well see in a gcse higher uh, paper the diagram shows a rectangular playground of with x and length 3x meters uh, the playground is extended by adding 10 metres to its width and 20 metres to its length to form a lar larger rectangular playground. The area of the larger rectangular playground is double the area of the original playground. Show this quadratic equation. OK, so um, here is our um, narrative equation. Uh, now, um, he's referring to things that we haven't actually got algebraic values for yet. So this bit above here is, is actually calculating those. The original area is 
x times 3x squared is straightforward, 3x squared. The area of the new play, play, playground is going to be, well, x is going to become x plus 10, and 3x is going to become 3x plus 20. So that's going to be the width and the length. We multiply that out, we get this. Right, so now if we go back to our narrative equation, the area of the larger rectangular playground is double the area of the original playground. So this is the area of the larger rectangular playground, the new revised one. Is E is, is double two times the area of the original playground, 3x squared. Okay, so we've applied uh, our algebraic values. Um, and now all we need to do really is rearrange and we'll see if we rearrange uh, this statement, we get to this, this being the equation. And that's what we're being required to show. Uh, <clears throat> um, okay. And um, right, so then it, 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 part B says, calculate the area of the original playground. Well, um, you know, as usual with these things, we've got to actually solve for the unknown, the unknown x being x. Um, so we're going to take this equation. I've, uh, I've, um, I've exploded the middle here. I've, uh, I've uh, I'll split up the x. Uh, X is like this again. See the see the video on this if you want to know how. And um, this is my little bit of working at the side to help me do that. Um, um, so I can factorize like this, and we end up with this factorization: X minus twenty into three X plus ten equals zero. Again, we've got a negative solution uh, to this equation, but there's only one solution that pertains to our problem, and that is X equals twenty. So if we're to calculate the area of the original playground, uh, we know, knowing now that x is equal to 20, then obviously we've got a playground of uh, width 20 and length uh, well, 63 times 20. And therefore the area of the original uh, playground is 1200 square meters. So, um, there we go. I think that was probably the best way to actually do uh, this problem um, is to do some examples. So there's a few variations there. Narrative equations, uh, the code words in the narrative equations like is of two times. These are the things we've seen. And sometimes when they're isn't actually a narrative equation, but we have to we have to create it. Perhaps those are the, the harder ones in actual fact. Um, but uh, hopefully that's uh, that has helped you to do these. And as I say, we can apply this idea not only to quadratics but to uh, to linear equations and uh, all sorts of uh, other uh, situations as well. So uh, hopefully uh, that's been useful. Thanks for listening.